Welcome to the Sailor Noob Podcast, where a super fan and a noob talk about the original Sailor Moon, episode by episode. I'm your host, Mikan Hana, joined by my co-host. I'm the co-host, Caliban. I'm also the noob, and I'm leaving on a midnight train to Juban. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and we're a couple of magical people ready to moon cosmic power make up this episode. Today, we are talking about episode number 99, Otoko no Yasashiya. Yuichiro Reini Shitsuren in Japanese, A Man's Kindness, Yuichiro Heartbroken by Rei, the English translation, and the English title, Mixed Emotions. Mixed Emotions. Yeah. Not clang, clang, clang with the trolley? No. No, we're not going for that. I mean, who knows Meet Me in St. Louis Meet these days in anyway? Meet Me in St. Juby? Whoa. Sounds like Juby. <laughs> mixed Emotions. Wow. What a, a stretch. Mixed bag. I have, I have taken a shackle. I have put it around my leg. Okay. Then I have put the other end of the shackle. Yeah. To Cloverway titles, and then I have just thrown one or both of us into the deep dark ocean, and I'm going down. <laughs> I just I know that they I they go for a while. I just felt like when I was looking at him, I was like, oh, I was kind of feeling it. Maybe I was high or something, but like I was looking at it and thinking like, these are all right. These are all right. And then every single week, it's just it's got a problem. It's just, just like some dumb thing. It's just two words. It's like, we didn't really try. They're not even, not, one of them isn't blues and they're not even like yeah. doing any puns or anything like that. And so no. I, I don't know. I, I need to start spreading my wings, I think, and uh, and trying to fly. Um, like R. Kelly, or maybe somebody else who's not oh, as problematic, <laughs> and uh, and really make an impression with my um, individ- with my Cal- Caliban titles. Yes, leaving the clover way behind. Okay, do it. Release the shackle. Let them drown and in their own mixed emotions, and then, like, if you will, furiously t- swim towards the surface. <laughs> that that swim that people always do uh, in the movies when they're when they're going towards the surface. Yeah, they're not. Uh, they're just you know that they're doing like a yeah it's, it's standing up breaststroke they're they're pumping their arms they're they're flapping their arms yeah. I've never swam like that before no I, and I, I think what it is 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 that there's only like seven feet of water in the tank in the uh, I see. Warner Brothers parking lot that they're shooting this thing in so they have to like make it look like that oh I'm coming up from some depths like they're I'm I'm really struggling kick your, here kick your feet. there's so much water yeah, yeah. and they they got a period costume on or something like that it just weighs you know that much heavier yeah. with all the water a poet yeah. shirt slows you down by 25% <laughs> we know this yeah. we know this to be and, true and, and salt water forget about it yeah, I mean it doesn't matter how flowy it is it's going to weigh you down yeah yeah. Not a lot of swimming going on. <laughs> With the poet shirts? No. No. Uh-uh. You got to take a train somewhere. <laughs> yes. Well, we can get into that later. Right now, let's get into talking about our new patron. Yes. We have a new patron at the Inner Sensu level named Johnny. Welcome to the patronage, Johnny. <laughs> Hello and welcome. I, the patronage to me is like, I imagine a ranch, you know, nice, not too fancy. Okay. But a lot of space for the patrons to run. <laughs> <laughs> and what? play with other patrons. <laughs> okay, so, you know, like a turn. vacation or whatever. <laughs> All right. But uh, Johnny listens to the show uh, at work, and so uh, we make the work day a little better. Awesome. Well, that's great to hear. Yeah. Uh, I like that we make people's work days go better because um, that makes me feel better. What if we just started like, uh, we're, we're doing TPS reports now. So like all of our Kira Kira Miru, uh, Japanese business, uh, here's some here's some figures for the fiscal oh year. We just like to do business stuff. <laughs> I think I would fall asleep like on the air and you'd probably have to poke me with a stick. You do that you office have... background noise where it's just like, phone kind of rings and they're like, just like, like talking you hear like a background. fax machine. Piece, yeah, piece of carrots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Printing out. Somebody's shuffling papers. Oh, phone rings again. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Well, we won't do that. No. Uh, as long as the money keeps coming in. Yeah, but thanks so much to Johnny and to all of our patrons. Uh, you're the reason that we do this. Yes. And you're welcome to stay at the Patronage Ranch 
has <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, we won't bring in We're, the office noises. Yeah, that's in development. <laughs> we'll let you know when the uh, patronage ranch tier opens. Uh, but until then, you could find information about our Patreon if you'd like to join and get access to extra content, extra podcasts on our Patreon feed at patreon.com forward slash Sailor Noob. All right. Well, let's get this train out of the station. Oh and uh, I was trying to think of like things I could say train like. Chugga, chugga. Woo woo! Chugga chugga. Um, and uh, by the way, I had like a little train conductor, like striped <laughs> baseball hat when what? I was a little kid, okay. and I had like, okay. yeah, no, 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 was... no, 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 like a little kid, and like I had like overalls that I was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, um, was that going somewhere? <laughs> not really. It just okay. like flashed in my head All for right. some reason. If I you ever go know. missing, that's the photo I'm going to use. <laughs> I'll give them. There's something more recent? No. <laughs> You'll find her on the rails. Mika, uh, four years old. <laughs> Riding the rails. That's where she is. Oh my God. That's where her heart lies. All right. Well, would you like to give us a breakdown of this episode? Yeah. Um. It is. Uh. It's a brisk episode. Yeah. Uh, and it really moves like it's on rails. I promise. Not a lot more of that. Uh. We were maybe a I little don't more. Promise. Yeah. No promises are made. We begin on a starry night at Hikawa Shrine, but all is not tranquil on this night. We hear the sounds of Ray chanting intensely, mm-hmm. and a stiff breeze shakes the boughs of the trees. Mm-hmm. No appearance by the ravens, though. I, yeah, I don't think we're going to see them. That? I don't think we're going to see them anymore. But that's okay. Uh, we know that they're, they're there. They're they're having fun off screen, at the ranch maybe. <laughs> uh, inside the shrine, we see Ray knelt before a fire praying, and these images of her uh, chanting and praying are intercut with flashes of her apocalyptic vision. Mm. And she thinks to herself, "I've been having that dream more often, but what does it mean?" We pull back to see Yuchiro, watching from the hallway anxiously. Someone taps him on the shoulder, and it's Gramps. Mm-hmm. Remember these two? Yep. <laughs> Actually, uh, Gramps says in, in like this weird voice, he goes, Yuchiro. <laughs> and when Chiro turns around, Gramps looks all spooky in the candlelight. And so Yuchiro like, freaks out, stifles a scream. And Gramps says, uh, what, are you, uh, what are you peeking at, bud? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Yui. How's the peeping? Oh, no. How's no, the peeping, weird. Yui? As the peeping. And Yuchiro's like, Whoa, no, I, I'm, I'm worried about Ray's health. And Gramps says, yeah, she's been at it until late every night. But she won't stop because I tell her to, so why not forget about it? It's great caretaking. Yeah. Great caretaking by Gramps. He says, uh, she's searching for something and she won't stop until she finds it. No problem. <laughs> he says in English. I love when random English just sneaks in here. It's not, I mean, clearly there are examples in our native tongue of English of people saying like, oh, Quran, <laughs> or, or, or uh, ooh la la. Right, right, or, right. right? Yes. It's, it's like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Those things come from somewhere, probably, right? We'll I, find out when HBO's The Gilded Age comes out. Well, I do um, think but that they, but, it's like they like the way that English sounds. Yeah, but like they must come from um, reruns of uh, Magnum P.I. Or, or something. Oh, you know, sure. I, I wonder what – this would be like an extra – subterranean Kiro Kiro Miru. Oh, boy. Where we like track down why they do the peace sign. Probably because, you know, t- t- victory GIs. Um, or why they – right. Are like no problem. <laughs> like, what is that? You know, did they love Alf? Uh, you know, what is it? <laughs> I don't know if they love Alf or not. That's hey, a good question. Willie. <laughs> uh, Yuchiro is undeterred, and he busts into the room saying, "Hey, it's time for a break. How about a cup noodle?" Yep, that always works. <laughs> but Ray doesn't respond, so he ties his sleeves back with a tasuki. Uh-huh. And he brings out the junk food Avengers. Yes. Delicious three minute, it's curry, in yep. quotes for legal reasons. Microwave spaghetti with meat sauce, omelet lunch with tuna sandwich, uh-huh. grilled rice balls and natto roll, nata de coco and bananas, uh-huh. and Hawkeye. Yes, the junk food Avengers. <laughs> oh, no. But still, no response from Ray. Yeah. I think I, I blame you for Me? the fact that I have not heard of nata de coco until. I watched this episode. I think I would love it. You probably would. It's coconut jelly. I yeah. don't even know what that means. In my mouth. Well, I can tell you what it means. Bring it on. Uh, it is... Oh, how many horses died to make it? 
Is it something like that? I don't that? think so. It's it's fermented coconut milk or coconut water. Fermented but in, coconut like cubes. water in cubes. Yep. They put in like Jello or something. Okay, maybe I'm I'm veering off now. Do you ever <laughs> do you ever try aspic? No, aspic I've never is, had is aspic. Gross. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's made from beef gelatin, right? So imagine uh-huh. Jello, right. but like beef Jello, which has a slightly greasy beef taste. And then there's like stuff in it, and it's usually like meat or something like that. So it's like a like a loaf, you know, and you cut it off, and uh, it's just it terrible. Sounds disgusting. It's cold. It's not. I don't know. Like more power to you if you like it, but. I ordered it once at like a German place thinking I was going to be all cool. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they like a lot of jelly type foods. Like, yeah. like, um, there's that, uh, Japanese dessert on Mitsu that's made with agar agar. So that's, you know, <laughs> agar, agar, yeah, it's, jelly fun. it's, it's another jelly type thing, but that's, um, you know, vegan, there are no, you know. So. Why is it two? Why is there two? I've never heard two augers before. I believe you. I've just always heard auger. I I've seen it referred to as auger and auger. Auger, so. powdered form. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. I believe you. I believe you. Okay. I think we have to continue. <laughs> All right. Okay, we'll look that up. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Ray is still in her own chanting world, and Yuchira wonders what she's looking for. Ray yes. recites the Kujin, and the fire increases in intensity. And Yuchiro sees that Ray's hair, which is blowing loose around her, is in danger of being singed by the fire. Makes me nervous. Yeah, uh, Ray. Yeah, she's different. <laughs> I'm surprised Ray doesn't have like a bob or something like that. Well, or yeah, right, exactly. Or she wouldn't like pull her hair back. Every time she does this. Anyways. Well, speaking of that, uh, she suddenly snaps out of it and she's like, oh, Yuchiro, uh, I'm kind of busy. And he's like, sure, but hey, tie your hair with this. And he gives her his sash. And he leaves and he thinks, there's nothing I can do to help her. Right. So we're, we're already at a, at, a, at a low point here at the beginning of the episode. Let's get lower. Cut to the basement lab where another demon egg is being born. And Dr. Giggles is, is really lovingly and creepily cradling the new egg and says... Gloria. Gloria. <laughs> not a, not a song. This is science's ultimate creation, living art. And it's being wasted by you, Coronite. <laughs> He's mad. He's mad. Well, it's a lot of eggs. Yeah. You got to break some to, to get a talisman. Uh, he's mad, but Cowrie says, my plans are perfectly calculated and harmonious. She's had, she had problem bosses before, so she's just big. <laughs> and uh, they're also works of art. There's just, you know, been unexpected interferences. And Giggle says, the end of this world and darkness are coming. The deadline is near. <laughs> Go, Kauranite. And Kauranite takes off with the egg. And probably going to take a long lunch, too. Probably. Cut. The next day at a train crossing, Ray is tired. She is pulling all-nighters, and she's thinking about skipping the study session today. We see that Yuchiro is following her, and he notes that she's exhausted. So does Usagi, who pops out from behind him and says, <laughs> Ray looks exhausted. And Yuchiro does the Dwight meme, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Usagi narrates, and so Yuchiro looked on as Ray walked away. To be continued. You always watch over the one you love. I know the feeling. Look at you, you handsome devil. Japan's best. <laughs> And she holds up a fan with the Japanese flag while flute music plays. And we see Mount Fuji and the Great Wave of Kanagawa in the background, which is, that's pretty patriotic. It is. <laughs> I think the American version is the stars and stripes behind a monster truck while an eagle holding machine gun flies over and its mask is below its beak. <laughs> that that's how we do that. Right. Yeah. Yuchiro's like, whoa, no, no, I'm, I'm just worried about Ray. You know, she's been up all night. She's going to ruin her health. And Usagi's like, oh, no, I, I get it. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. Got a bad case of loving you. <laughs> She's lovesick. Ichiro is literally, figuratively, hit in the head by a giant heart. He does not yeah. scream lovely. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that he does say, good. in love with who? And Usagi's like, duh. She's divining if you'll be a good married couple. Most people just get those little, you know, scroll. <laughs> little horoscopes. She's, well, she's or lighting a love fire. charm yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. right. Or the, the, the squeeze the love tester machine. Right. Oh, cold yes. fish. I don't think so. <laughs> but Yuchiro's like, marrying me? And this whole time he's had a, a, a bag of groceries. 
<laughs> and he's like hugging the bag of groceries to him. Like those eggs, they're, they're all broken. I know. Usagi holds her school case over her face and she's like, I wish I could live with Mamo. Oh, I'm blushing. And she accidentally, I think, knocks him to the ground. <laughs> She says, oh, yeah, uh, don't tell Ray I said anything. Bye. And Yuchiro is like, Ray likes me. It's great to be young. <laughs> it's great. This is youth. Or it's Greta to be young. Both apply. <laughs> While this is going on, we see the Toten, the Tokyo tram going by. And sitting right on top of it, like Judy Garland, is Karanite. <laughs> She's having a good time. Yeah. She's got this plan. She's going to put an egg in the tram. And then it can just be exposed to lots of people coming on and getting off the train. Mm -hmm. One of which, presumably, will have a pure heart. It's not a bad plan. Not not a bad plan. It's Maybe one of it'll be better plans. One of the characters who's a character on this show. Perhaps it who will. Who can say? <laughs> Let's see if it pays off for her. <laughs> Yuchiro's walking down the street when he hears a familiar peal of female laughter. And he also hears the synth funk groove of Make Me Feel by Janelle Monet. <laughs> oh my goodness! See, All the song references. I put myself in a corner with this bit with the lesbian songs, but this is Ray. And as we know, 90s anime Ray is bisexual. So the bit continues. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ray is talking with Haruka as Haruka leans against her motorcycle, and this is this is a this is a real butch day for Haruka. She's <laughs> wow. she's got she's got a rumpled Oxford on uh -huh. with a gold chain. And she's uh, yeah. she's wearing pedal pushers and clogs. If Steve McQueen and Audrey Hepburn got too vixed. That's what we're looking at here. <laughs> she looks good, is what I'm saying. No, she does. Uh, she's also in the bloods, I guess, because she's got a red kerchief tied around her yeah, arm. <laughs> what is going on? I didn't know that? she was wearing colors. But... <laughs> and Ray says, uh, oh, no, Haruka, I wasn't yawning with my mouth agape. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> what? Since when do you talk like that, Ray? Uh, I don't get that. No. Uh, but she's being real giggly, though. Uh-huh. And Haruka leans in with her hand on Ray's cheek and says, see, you've got bags under your eyes. Rose petals. Uh-huh. And she says, come on, I'll give you a lift. And hands her a helmet. And Ray leans on her and says, lucky. <laughs> and Yuchiro says, I've lost. Ray, with a man like that, my youth is over. <laughs> Haruka's about to gun it, but Ray says, one second. And she takes out Yuchiro's sash and ties her hair back. She says, it's my good luck charm. And Haruka's like, well, I'm, I'm a safe driver, but okay. <laughs> and they peel out to a new horizon. Uh... Or do they? Yeah. Because we once again see Ray's apocalyptic vision, and she wakes with a start at the study group with everyone looking at her. I'm going to choose to believe that her sapphic encounter was not a dream. I don't think <laughs> Although, it was. No, I don't think it was. But the way that it's positioned, because it's important to the plot, but the way you don't have a character like immediately wake up from a dream and have it not be... Related yeah. to the scene right before. Yeah. If like, yeah. say for instance, Usagi is in a hospital because she ate too much ice cream, and then she goes, huh, What? Like, we know that didn't really happen. Right. Okay. Exactly. But the thing with the, the Haruka happened. It, it happened because Yuichiro gets, as he's upset. Yeah. So that, that happened. His youth is over. Yes. <laughs> uh, Artemis, remember him? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Artemis says, uh, wow, you look like you're not getting enough sleep. That's a big mood right there. Uh-huh. And Ami says, uh, don't overdo it just because there's a test coming up, which is huge for her. <laughs> Ray says, oh, uh, yes. I'll be right back. And when she's gone, Usagi says... Life is short. Go and love, girl. <laughs> and the other girls are like, what What are you talking about? I know. Usagi's like, oh, I'm just using my women's intuition. But the girls are like, uh, you guess wrong on tests. So. <laughs> uh, Makoto seems to know that something's up, though. If anybody knows love sickness, it's her. Yeah. She meets Ray outside and says, you don't look lovesick. You'd probably be a lot happier. Uh, what's the matter? And Ray says, yeah, thanks. I'm not sure what it is, but... You know, when I know, and Mako jumps in and says, it'll be time for the Sailor Guardians to take action. But try not to make it the day before the test. <laughs> and they have a little laugh. It's a cute scene. It is cute. I, I really see, like it. I can see the, the, the Ray Mako thing. Yeah, well. More in the live action. The live action. That one episode in the live action. Was the Ray's got it going on with everybody. On the streets, <laughs> Yuchiro is jogging or yogging. And while he's on his yog, he's thinking, who was that guy with Ray? He stops to take a drink and he sees Michiro playing her violin in the park at night alone. Yeah. Japan is a different country. <laughs> it sure it's just is. a safer country. Yeah. There's probably a police office right around the corner, though. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Guy in white gloves just a sitting there waiting yeah. to hear, hear about problems. Uh, while he's listening to the music, he sees Haruka arrive and she says, Michiru, is what we're doing worth it? 
And Mishiru says, well, this isn't like you. I thought you were a crip. No, she says, uh, oh, <laughs> Haruka says, what if it's too late? No matter what we do. And Michiru takes her hand and says, the cogs of fate have begun to turn and the new awakening will come soon. We have to sacrifice everything for the talismans and our set. I know it's the 90s. I don't know why. <laughs> you got to be careful wearing a bandana. It's a certain color. I, I, I um, would agree with that. Haruka said, but it's like, it works its way into fashion, doesn't it? Like, I think so. It's urban sort of uh, affectation. It's yeah. Like kind of where some fashion starts. But I'm not entirely sure what it's doing here. You know, like it's, it's just unclear to me. There were about 10 seconds before um, the early 90s and, and gangster rap and like rap culture became... Kind of mainstream culture, we were tying handkerchiefs around things. Yeah. Bruce Springsteen would have like a handkerchief tied around oh, sure. something, his leg or his arm or something. So you think maybe it's something <sighs> like that? Ooh, born to run. <laughs> we were born to run. Just get on that motorcycle. Yeah. Head right. out to the outskirts of town, <laughs> at the old water tower. Oh my God. With my best straight girl on the back. Not for long. Uh, uh, Haruka says, <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the Moonlight Night, not that one. <laughs> Weakened my resolve, although my new ship, Haruka and Moonlight Night, that's that's a given. Whoa, right there. Let's try that's that out. interesting. Uh, and they embrace. And Yuchiro sees this and thinks, a two-timer? Yep. Unforgivable. Yep. We cut to the eye catch. When we come back, we see Yuchiro. I think it's like the next day. And he is standing in the rain, lightning arcing over his head. And he's in full showdown attire, yeah. denim from head to foot. Uh-huh. He's got to weigh 200 pounds with all the water, the wet denim, just like holding them down. But he's calling Haruka out. Uh-huh. And they are both standing in an empty lot. And she's got a sensible umbrella. <laughs> she sure does. But he's like hair in his face. It's always in his face. But now it's wet. <laughs> she says, are you Yachiro Kamado? Uh, what did you want? He tears his jacket off and says, fight me. And she's like, you got a problem with me? <laughs> and he says, ask your heart. And he charges towards her, and she says, good grief. And it's a good choice of words, because like Lucy in the football, she gets out of his way, oh, that's and he so keeps true. going, and he face plants in the mud. And Yuchiro, <laughs> undaunted, is like, we're just getting started. And he lunges at her several more times, each time missing and ending up sprawled in the mud. And every time he does it, he's like screaming at the top of his lungs, <laughs> He's too. not happy. So Ray, who is walking by this lot, hears the commotion. And yeah. Uruka's like, okay, let's wrap this up. But Yuchiro says, I'm fighting for my youth. And he tries one more time. However, Ray calls his name and his sandal. He's wearing his wooden sandals this whole time. Yeah. His, his sandal gets sandals, stuck yeah. in the mud and he once again hits the ground. And Ray runs to Haruka. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was it. <laughs> this poor guy. He's Charlie Brown. He is Charlie Brown. He is. Charlie Brown. <laughs> Uh, like the guy in uh, Kill Bill. Uh, and Haruka <laughs> shelters her with her umbrella, and Ray's like, Yuchiro, what's this all about? And Yuchiro says, so you're defending him after all? No, don't say a word. <laughs> he gets up and says, Haruka, you're a two-timer, but you're quite a man. Stop making Ray suffer. Break it off with that other girl. That's all I have to say. And he walks off. And Haruka's like, I don't, what? I don't, what? <laughs> But Ray looks mortified. And as he leaves, he thinks, Ray, I wish you happiness. Uh-huh. Haruka's like, do you want to go after him? And Ray's like, I don't care what he does. But she picks up his jacket and stares at it. Uh-huh. At Akawa Shrine, whole lot of studying going on. Yeah. And Ray's not there. Neither is Yuchiro. And Usagi thinks she knows what that means. Uh-huh. Ooh, they're sharing an umbrella. And... <laughs> but Mako runs up and says, everybody, come quick. We see Yuchiro with a sea bag, uh, a, a duffel, a duffel bag. Yeah. And he's talking to Gramps. And he says, I'll never forget you. Farewell. Uh-huh. And he turns to leave. But the girls, minus Ray, surround him. And they all ask him, where, where, where are you going? What's going on? He says, don't ask. And he walks off into the sunset. Mm-hmm. As he does, he passes Ray when she arrives. Ray turns to see him go. As he picks up speed and runs away, she says, stupid Yuchiro. She doesn't want to go after him. No. But Usagi says, he was concerned about you. He cares about you. And Ray, with tears in her eyes, says, and why didn't he trust me? Usagi says, tell him that yourself. Smacks her <laughs> in the face. <laughs> says, go make things right. Ray does not kill her. Uh-huh. But instead says, arigato. 
Mm -hmm. She runs to the train station to try and stop Ichiro from leaving. And through this whole sequence, there's this great dramatic ballad playing Mm -hmm. and a bunch of dissolves between Ray running and Yuchiro waiting on this platform for the train to arrive. Yeah, that's great. Ray reaches the platform just as the train does. And just as Yuchiro steps aboard, a burst of light comes from the train car, which lifts up into the sky and transforms into Toten. Yes. A train-based demon. Yes. Toten blows her whistle and says, passengers, please board quickly. (laughs) Yuchiro backs away, but Kaurinite appears behind him and says, get that heart. Toten reveals her left armpit star tattoo and blasts Yuchiro. Ray wastes no time transforming to her own song. I know. The Sailor Sailor Mars Mars theme. Sailor Mars. First time we've heard it within the actual uh, series. Yes, yes. And from the movie before. Yes. Our movie. And just as Yuchiro's heart leaves his chest, Sailor Mars yells, Stop! How dare you try to take his pure heart? In the name of Mars, I'll chastise you. Mm -hmm. Kara Knight, having learned from past mistakes, blinks in, takes Yuchiro's heart, and blinks away. Yes. And he collapses to the ground. And Toten has a schedule to keep, so with a blast of her whistle... (laughs) She whips a strap at Ray, trapping her. This is like a like a strap that you'd hold on to. Yeah, with a little up. ring. Yeah, yeah. She <laughs> grabs her on and bashes her into the ground. Safety first. <laughs> Kaurinite examines Uchiro's heart crystal and determines that it is not a talisman, but a Venus love me chain. Knocks the crystal from her hand and breaks Ray's bonds. Yes. As Sailor Mercury gracefully grabs the heart. Kaurinite clutches her hand and says, you again. The sailors regroup. As Sailor Moon says... The Toten's motto is no accidents, no violations. You're a bad girl who failed to live up to the motto. In the name of the moon, I'll punish you. <laughs> Kauri says, Toten, all yours, and disappears. <laughs> Toten shoots wiggly, electrified train tracks from her cuffs. Yep. Finally, I got to say that. <laughs> they surround the sailors and trap them, and she says, We'll be departing shortly and transforms into a woman train, which is like just her on all fours, basically, yep. <laughs> on yep. a wheeled cart. Mm-hmm. And she starts trucking towards the senshi. Ding, ding. Yes. Smashing into them and sending them flying. Jupiter recovers and throws a sparkling wide pressure. But Toten says, safety first, <laughs> absorbs it into her overhead wires and fires it back at the senshi. Yeah. And they're great. like, whoa, look out. Uh, it misses, but Toten chases it with another pair of wiggly tracks, and the senshi are pinned down and incapacitated. And as Toten lands, she says, last stop will be the afterlife. Uh-huh. And once again begins rolling towards the senshi. But Ray manages to whip an afuda at the demon's head, depowering her and slowing her down. <laughs> she says, emergency, stop! And she starts going like, uh, uh, move! <laughs> Come on, move! <laughs> you can't move! <laughs> Look. Ray gets up and says, my turn. Stealing Yuchiro's heart is a heinous crime. Burning Mandala! And blasts the trained demon who screams, Dangerous items aren't allowed on board! <laughs> Ray yells, Now, Sailor Moon! And we get the MSHA for the win. The train menace is no more, and Yuchiro's heart is restored. From a building far away, <laughs> not even close, Neptune and Uranus are watching this, and they say, oh, They're pretty good. And they depart. <laughs> Later at the station, Yuchiro wakes up on a bench with Ray, and he's like, ah, well, where's the monster? But Ray says, oh, what, did you have a dream? I oh, can't keep getting away with this. I know. <laughs> she, at least they'd mention it, I though. Guess. She binds his hurt arm with his sash because she left her blood uh, kerchief at home. <laughs> and she says, you're so inconsiderate. Next time, give me a ribbon. For my she hair. Negging him? I kind of, I think, yeah. This this thing that you gave me of yours isn't good enough. <laughs> Let's go. Uh-uh. And you should apologize to Haruka. You tried to fight a lovely young girl. Uh-huh. And Yuchiro's like, Jose <laughs> Ray's like, come on. And as they leave, we see Usagi like for one second, like stick her head out from behind the train station. Like <laughs> well, I didn't notice. Yeah, that. she real good. She just kinda goes, Poop. Uh, and they go back in. Funny. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. it. Yay. We who have now reached our final destination. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, Yuchiro, who we haven't seen in a while, and yeah. I don't believe are going to see again in Sailor Moon S, um, is, is... A, is a nice guy. Yeah. Is he a nice guy? I, okay, I, like I don't like hadn't... the title. Well, it, it means something different now. Mm-hmm. Incels hadn't been invented uh, when this, this aired. 
Uh, Shots fired. And so, do do you know what I mean, though? Yeah, I I do know what you mean. I I don't know. I mean, I don't watch a lot of kids' cartoons, except I watch a Star Trek kids' cartoon now, because that's what I got. But I don't know if, like, Star Star Trek, if cartoons are dealing with what we know now about sexual politics, even amongst young people and children. Yeah, I don't know. So, there's the longstanding trope of... Um, sex or love and relationship as a reward. So the girl doesn't mm-hmm. like the guy. The guy gets himself nearly killed to save her. And then she's like, oh, you're my hero. And then she goes out with him afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they avoid all of that. They do. And honestly, like, you know, Yuchiro is somebody who we we saw it. It was in somebody's hand. We know he has a pure heart. Mm-hmm. So he wouldn't be like that. But he does, no. you know, love Ray, and he wants to, to be with her and he, he wants to pursue her. And so I wonder if you watched, um, I don't know, Steven Universe or or Avatar The Last Airbender. If there's some modern cartoon that um, tries to address the idea of a male character, uh-huh. generally male character, right. feeling like they're owed something, which is something that we got a real problem with I don't on the know. internet and yeah, other places. That is very true. That's a because if I was gonna because I don't want to bury Ichiro as a character, but if I was no. gonna like do a funny thing like I do, I would you know call him an incel and be like, she's never gonna go out with you. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's that's kind of like the angle here. I mean, I like you, Ichiro, but um, I um, I don't like how he's acting in this episode. Like I know that he cares about ray and that he's trying to be considerate and think of her and try to feed her and make sure she's okay and everything um but i feel like he's not really he hasn't shared how he feels with her right so it comes off as him being inconsiderate of her feelings completely like what if what if she is really into haruka i know haruka is with michiru but Let's just say she is really into Haruka and, um, you know, him being like, oh, well, Usagi like told me that she likes me. So it must be true. And, you know, I mean, I just. Well, I think the the, 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 the episode and his his actions, though, rest on him getting involved once he thinks that she's being. Uh, um, to, yeah. None of really none of it is his business. No. But he's content for his youth to be over. When he thinks that Ray likes somebody else, as long as but then she'll he realizes be happy. that he he thinks that she is being betrayed by this person. Yes, and he wants that to come out. And not knowing, I'm sexual politics being what they are. I'm not saying go out and get in a fight with a lady if you're a, a guy, but you know, being what they are at the time, his solution is right now, dude, right in the empty lot, right now. <laughs> I know. Uh, we're gonna rumble. And so that's all well and good. I'm just saying, it, I, I, I'm not accusing him of that. And I think that his actions are understandable as a cartoon character and consistent with what we know of his character. I was just seeing him and seeing, thinking about other characters who are an example, both good and bad, of what I'm talking about. I was yeah. just opining on whether modern cartoons do that at all. I don't I know. Don't What's going know. on with Arthur? Whoa. <laughs> I think... Arthur's too young, right? No, I don't know. What's the cartoon that is, is getting a new season, but we're going to see them as adults? Oh, I don't know the answer to that. That's interesting, and I'm not entirely sure how I feel. <clears throat> but I feel like... It's Arthur. It is? Yeah. The the last... That's weird. The Arthur finale, uh, which Arthur's been on for 25 years, by the way. Holy cow. Yeah. Um... <laughs> so maybe you'll get your answer as right. <laughs> with Arthur as adults. Uh, Francine, I'll finally punch him back. Uh, we'll get a new meme. Um, did you get all that right? How'd I do? I think, I think so. <laughs> that's a sister, I've been right? a really, yeah, that's his sister. Um, Look, it's been on for 25 years. I know. There's some cultural osmosis that happens. But yeah, the last episode of Arthur will have a Harry Potter epilogue type thing where we're seeing Arthur as an adult and presumably his weird, weird eared children. <laughs> Okay, they're all they, they're they're aardvarks, right? I mean, that's he just, is. His yeah. sister is a is a monkey. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that is kind of. Don't think about it. it it's a cartoon. Um, is it yeah. his sister? Yes. I'm, I'm re- re- I, the only Arthur Francine I know is, is Dudley Moore. Is Arthur. Oh my goodness! I, nobody understands that. Go ahead. Um. Does Ray like Yuichiro? Like, 
It. I don't. I'm not convinced. Francine is not his sister. I looked it up. Oh, okay. No, Ray doesn't like Yuchiro. Uh, I don't know why they keep doing this, and this is the only reason that anybody says that Ray is bi in the '90s anime. And this episode, or no, not just this episode, but like her continued connection to to him. If they really wanted this to happen, why isn't it happening? I know that like Usagi is the um, the focus of the series, and mm-hmm. her um, relationship with Mamoru is not only. Something that we follow and are satisfied by, but also right. is like tied into the the legacy of of the franchise. Yeah, you know? absolutely. It, it, it creates things that we deal with later, so that's important. But you know, you've got like Makoto is very heterosexual, and we mm-hmm. know that she has had other relationships, so that's established. Mina yeah. is in love with an older man. You know, right. Ami has no time for any of this. Uh, <laughs> And if it wasn't for Yuchiro, there nobody would even be arguing that Ray is bisexual. Now it's fine if she's bisexual, fine. Right. You know, and in fact, I guess I'd probably, with a gun to my head, uh, go with that for her um, for her you know orientation in the anime. If I had to choose something, mm. but I think there's like some like comp het thing things going on here. What like how so? Compulsory heterosexuality. Okay. Which is the idea that. Heterosexuality is assumed the norm for right. women because of, you know, societal expectations and pressure. Not necessarily that we're all gay or we're all open for whatever. Right. But it's just sort of presumed right. because what else is she going to do? Be gay? I don't think so. Do you – does it feel like they're – I don't want to say that it's – I don't think it's necessary. Does it feel like they're queer baiting Ray in this episode? Like, does it feel like this they're... whole this whole season is queer baiting, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. Well, okay, so queer baiting is that's a term that's I don't people don't really use that anymore, do they? I but don't know. It, a while ago, it was thrown around a lot, and I guess what's behind it, like any crime, intent, right? Yeah. So what's the point of it? Are, did they were they really trying to get? No, um, I don't think gay so. Gay and bi curious or uh, or bisexual uh, viewers by having their girls kind of make eyes at each other. No, for nineteen nineties is... Japan, I don't think so. Right, and it's yeah. and it's things that were. I know we've talked about how some of it's in the manga, some of it's like added to the manga, some things from the manga are left out. Right, but it's consistent in its presence from both the manga and the show. They mm-hmm. could have gone a crystal. <laughs> from what I understand about Crystal, or mm-hmm. some of Crystal, and just straight watched everybody and said, we don't want to deal with it. But they clearly wanted it to be an element. I so, don't think they straight wash on Crystal. Well, I only the cousins are, they're the only representatives of a... Oh, uh, well. Right? I mean, you've watched more of it than I have. I, well, I mean, I I, I I don't know. In the manga, Ray is, is kind of... Yeah, 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 yeah. She has no, wants nothing to do with boys, we know. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. But I'm talking about Crystal. And I'm just yeah. saying, from what I understand about Crystal, you know, yes, uh, Neptune and, and Uranus are, are uh, a couple. Yeah. But other than that, we don't do a lot of this, like you said, queer baiting. There's and I don't some think... other stuff. I feel like. Oh, okay. Well, well. Anyway, I mean, so you're you're using that term, but I don't think that that term applies necessarily okay. because I don't think that they are. It's an incorrect term. The the intent is what is behind queer baiting. This is just you know having characters be like, oh, maybe I'm not 100 percent whatever. You know, mm-hmm. I certainly think this is I like what's going on here. So do you? Feel... That's just the spectrum of human sexuality, right? Which is not, which is usually overwritten by the heteronormative idea of. He man is a man and Tila is a girl and so they love each other. Right. Right. Do you, do you think that like in this episode do you feel like the the situation with or the interaction I should say with with Ray and and Haruka is that's just meant for comedy and to make Yuichiro like get mad like or are we supposed to I was th- I, I was How thinking... sensitively how are we supposed to I was thinking about this a lot. Okay. The, the the short answer is, it doesn't matter at all, right? Right. Yeah. Because the net is going to do whatever they want with it. Yeah, and, absolutely. And the characters belong to the fans more than they belong to the creators once they're out there, right? No, I 100% yeah. agree with that. The long story is, these are not real people. So they do not even have the very complicated 
uh, constellation of desires and impulses right. and motivations that real people have. All we have is like what we see. Absolutely. So we can construct whatever we want. Right. And we're not like dishonoring them to to get it wrong. This right. we talked about this when we talked about like how we wanted to refer to Haruka, mm-hmm. and they never really make it clear how she considers herself. You know what she wants her gender to be. No. But they never say it's not female. Uh, right. In fact, many, many of like in this episode, many of the reveals are you thought it was one thing, it's this, right? And so we just went, we're going to call her, use her pronouns, and say she, and we'll just do that, and that's that's fine. Mm-hmm. We can't offend her; she's not real, right? Um, point is, your question was, do you think that's what they're doing? And I'm like, who cares? <laughs> no, I know, like, who cares? I'm just like it. I, I, it has it has inspired people. Yeah. Look at how many uh, LGBTQ fans the series and the franchise I know, has. Absolutely, uh, absolutely, it, that is what it is. Why well, not? And and I I completely agree with you. Like, Even though it'll audience, never go anywhere. Yeah, many people will right. be will have to write their own fan. That's fic. what ships are for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it, it would be cool if we could put some more representation in. That's really agree. what this is all about. And, and I, I do agree that like you know as as the audience of any art form it's you know you can interpret the art however you you want to and it's it's there you know just don't do it wrong don't do it wrong (laughs) well like you definitely you know there are artists and and certain artists in their work that is just like you know taken wrong (laughs) incorrectly i love it when there's something that has like just huge obvious uh gay subtext and like super straight people are like yeah this is great (laughs) I feel like that happens. And you're like... <laughs> a fair amount. You like that, huh? Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Right. Do your parents know? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, my goodness. But, like, you get that a lot. Like, do yes. you think, like... Um, do you... <laughs> like, just, like, the homoerotic tension in these, like, action movies where these guys and their oiled I muscles know. are, like... I know. Their noses are touching. They're like, oh, yeah. you want to do it, bro? You want to go right now? Yeah. To a shady spot? Yeah, right. Make out. <laughs> like, what's what's going on here? I know! What is really happening? And yet not a single gay character uh, canonically in the Fast universe, is there? Nobody's gay. I don't know if anybody is gay. I don't think so. Pro- one of the women probably is bisexual, because that's the other side of the patriarchal thing. There's comp head, and then there's, like, enforced bisexuality or lesbianism. Right. Yeah. That, that happens a lot, too. Vroom, vroom! <laughs> I really like the scene between Mako and Ray in this episode, too. Um, I like that Mako senses that something is off, and she offers to... for She wants Ray to confide in her. Yeah, I don't know who the best friend is. And I don't mean, like, best friends. I mean, like, out of the friends. I guess, I guess you need a lot of different friends for a lot of different times in your life. Yeah. Um, because Usagi certainly doesn't help things uh, throughout the episode. But then she's the one at the end who gives her the push and says, look, yeah. whatever th- this is, we don't want him to go away. So right. go get him. Bring right. him back. Whatever your, your pride is. I also thought that it was <laughs> – this is why <laughs> a nice man. That uh, bothers this me. Is why I don't, me this is why I don't like it because <clears throat> it's – it isn't all about him. But a lot of it's about him. It's a lot about him. And yeah. we get at the end, Ray's, um, we don't get a line, but the, her entire face is red, which is not like I'm turned on. That's like, I am embarrassed. Yeah. This guy I know is beating up this really cute girl who, you know, I don't know all that well. Mm-hmm. And so I look like an asshole here. Right. And she doesn't, there are nothing, we don't dive in on that at all. We immediately follow Yuchiro and his grand dramatic uh, right. hissy fit that he's throwing. Yeah. Uh, and then when Ray doesn't want to go follow him, Usagi says, well, go follow him. And she's like, "He? why wouldn't he try? If he loves me, why doesn't he trust me? Mm-hmm. And that's A, good because it shows like an interiority for Ray yeah. about how she is mad because she feels, you know, betrayed by him. She hasn't done anything wrong. No. But it's B, bad because it presumes some kind of connection and something for him to be jealous about or that she could betray him. 
Yeah. If there is nothing between them and there is not, then she owes him nothing. No, she doesn't owe him anything. But she's mad. I like that she can feel mad about his actions towards her and mm-hmm. resent him. I think that she, you know, has earned that. Yeah. And that's that's fair. But it also like a priori assumes that there is something that she has been faithful to. When right. she doesn't know him. I don't it. think that that is the case at all. I mean, clearly she cares about him, but I don't think that she's necessarily romantically interested in him. Right. You know, this episode didn't prove that she's romantically interested in him, just that she doesn't want him to go away and that she, you know, cares about his well-being and that I sort know. of thing. You let a wrestler kick you in the head one time <laughs> for a guy and suddenly he owns you. <laughs> yeah. Backtracking is back for an all-new season. Hi, I'm Caliban. And I'm Gooey Fame. And we'd like to introduce you to Backtracking, the podcast that explores the real-world inspirations behind your favorite episodes of Star Trek. From historical events to classical literature to blockbuster films, we go where no pod has gone before to seek out the origins of classic Trek tales. Did you know, Gooey, that the TNG episode Too Short a Season was an allegory for the Iran-Contra affair? Yeah, only sweatier. Did you know that the Enterprise episode Regeneration was an homage to the John Carpenter film The Thing? Archer and T'Pol freezing to death over a bottle of whiskey would have been a controversial ending. As a dog lover, Archer would not like The Thing, I'm guessing. Oh my god, movie night is cancelled. Join us every other Thursday for a journey back to the beginnings of the Trek universe. Backtracking is available wherever you get your podcast. No, Porthos! Mirror, we're curiously looking around. We talk about elements of Japanese culture within the episode. Today, we're going to talk about trains in Tokyo. Nice. So, uh, Japan's railway system can be split up into three distinct groups Japan Rail, known as JR, subways, and other private railways. Huh. Um, and I'm just going to, we're scratching the surface here. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Tokyo is massive. Um, So public transport within Greater Tokyo is dominated by the world's most extensive urban rail network. Um, And as of May 2014, there was 4,714.5 kilometers or 2,292.5 miles of operational track for suburban trains and subways run by a variety of operators. Uh, The urban rail system in Tokyo does not behave like a single unified network, but is separately owned and operated systems within a varying degree of interconnectivity. Each of the region's rail companies tends to display only its own maps with key transfer points highlighted, ignoring the rest of the metro area's network. Um, And that's not... I mean, you can, you can kind of find some, but if like you're in a particular train station, you know, you're going to probably just see what's there and you're not going to necessarily see what how you can get to some point that is with a different operator. And when I say different operator, I mean a different uh, rail line. Hello, operator. Yeah. Uh, it's So what you're telling me is the smartphone changed 100%. their way of life because Google just tells you when the next train's coming, and it probably doesn't care which company no. it is. Uh, this also, uh, by omission, uh, you have told me that Japan does not subsidize its transport system like we do in America. What do you mean by subsidize? It's not owned by the government. Part nor of it is, is it, if that makes sense. Oh, so it's partially nationalized, but it's not. Their transit was uh, deregulated in two thousand two. Yeah. So previous to that. Right. It was subsidized. Right. Right. And we don't seem to like that, do we? So this is why deregulation is a bad idea. Although I found an article on Bloomberg that says, why Tokyo's privately owned rail systems work so well. Of course you'd say that, Bloomberg. Okay. Of course you'd Well, around 40 million passengers use the rail system daily, which is about 14.6 billion annually, with the subway representing 22% of that, with 8.66 million using it daily. Uh, There are 0.24 commuter rail stations per square kilometer, or 0.61 square mile in Tokyo, um, or one for each 1.6 square miles of developed land. 
Uh, that seems like a lot. Yeah. There are 882 interconnected rail stations in the Tokyo metropolis, 282 of which are subway stations, with several hundred more in each of the three surrounding populated suburban prefectures. Uh, there are 30 railway operators running 121 passenger <laughs> rail lines, 102 serving Tokyo, and 19 more serving the greater Tokyo, but not Tokyo's city center. Uh, and Shinjuku Station is the busiest train station in the world by passenger uh, number count. So the amount of passengers that go through there um, daily, annually, is the highest in the world. Uh, and some of these train stations... I feel like a lot of really big train stations like Shinjuku, for example, you should kind of try to think of it like um, an airport just for trains. So Why it's, do it's, I... some of these are massive yeah. and they have lots of different lines and they have lines from different companies and that sort of thing. Why do I always see, though, pictures of Grand Central Station in New York? And it's like, oh, this is, oh, this is busy. But when I see Shinjuku, I only ever see the intersection of the streets outside, which admittedly has a lot of people yeah. on it. Where how, come there they... isn't, how come there isn't like a busyness money shot of like the inside of, uh, of the, of the, the terminal where it's like, Oh, people are just coming through there looking at the billboards. <laughs> well, what, what time's my train coming? Because Shinjuku station <laughs> is, they don't show the, the street outside right. of Grand Central Station. They always show all the people standing on the marble floor in Grand Central Station. Well, like, well, okay. So Do they have rules about not taking pictures inside train stations. No, no, of course not. But there isn't a central place that would be like, wow, look at all these people oh, compared like to Grand Central. Yes, it's like terminals oh. and and there's lots of shopping and shops. And like, so it's like, oh, where am I going? I'm going over here. I'm going over there. So you could like, you could take a video maybe that would capture it and just kind of spin around. <laughs> but you'd want to heat like- map. A heat map? Yes. You have, you simulate the bodies, the numbers of people coming through at uh -huh. a certain time and the flow of, of people. Mm -hmm. Don't do it to real people. You violate their privacy, but you, you know, you do a, a map of, uh, you know, here's a time lapse from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Right. The amount of people coming through the station. And it would sure. be like, at yeah. a certain time, it's green. But then, it, you know, at, at peak time, it's red. It's hot. Right. No, I could totally see that. I actually, you just reminded me, I heard on a, a video somewhere, I don't know if it's just in, if it's in Tokyo or if it's all over Japan, but Japan actually uses, um, there are some train stations that use, have these special pressured tiles and they use foot traffic to um, actually generate energy for the train station. What? Yep. So here's my guess, and I don't want to spend the whole time on this, but the, it must be, it's like a Google box. <laughs> what? Remember on Rick and Morty? Don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't. It's, it's probably piezoelectric. Probably. I, I don't a hundred percent know, um, what, how it, it works not, exactly, but it like works to like help power the, the better, things in the station. I'm impressed by that, huh? I, <laughs> I, I yes, I am very impressed. That is that is uh, I mean, you have a very scientific it, mind, it, but it's yeah. it's material that it can be made of a lot of different stuff. But it it accumulates an electric charge in response to mechanical stress. Mm -hmm. So like pushing down on it, you know, would create current. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yes, correct. I'll just be quiet for the rest of the no, segment. No, you're fine. fine. Go ahead. Good. Um, but I, you know, so that's like the bigger stations like Shinjuku. Not every station is like that. But uh, East Japan Railway Company or JR East. Now, there are several different um, JR companies in Japan. Uh, JR East is one of them. It's, it's the largest passenger railway company in the world. And it operates trains throughout the greater Tokyo area as well as the rest of northeastern Honshu. Um and it operates the majority of Japan's commuter trains um, throughout Japan, uh, as well as several freight lines. Uh, in addition to operating some long-haul Shinkansen uh, lines, JR East operates Tokyo's largest commuter railway network, uh, which are above-ground trains. Okay. Um, and when I was in Japan, uh, the trains that left from... I, I was living in Hikone, and we only had, like, it was one. It was a station that had 
one line going one way and one line going the other way. So, um, but you could go to a lot of different places, but it was above ground trains. And I, I believe it was uh, JR as well, um, just for that area. The two most popular lines in this network includes the uh, Yamanote line, uh, which runs in a circle around inner Tokyo. So it's kind of, it's a good one to know if, if you happen to be a tourist in Tokyo and you want to like hit a lot of major touristy spots. Um, and uh, the other one is the Chu Sobu line, which runs east and west across Tokyo. Um, and these are also probably really popular because they're kind of like in the center of Tokyo. So a lot of commuters take them as well. Uh, there are two primary subway operators in Tokyo, the Tokyo Metro, which currently operates 180 stations on nine lines, and the uh, Toei Subway, which operates 106, 106 stations on four lines. And <laughs> it is driven by a cat. <laughs> yeah, with a crescent moon. No relation to, to Toei. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but it, so the Toei Subway is actually run by the Tokyo Metropolitan Bureau of Transportation, uh, which oh, is interesting. Tokyo Metropolitan Government. Still regulated. Yes. Okay. So that's, but that's only four of the, the lines in the subway. Um, probably not profitable enough for a private company to, to take over, right? Well, um, like, yeah, we don't want to do that one. Tokyo Metro, like, I, I don't remember how it breaks down exactly, but like Tokyo Metro, when they, when it split off and, um, uh, they, they basically, I think the government said we want to continue operating these lines huh. or I, I'm not sure. Interesting. It was either I want to continue. I think that's what it was. Um, do they go under, uh, sensitive places? Oh, that is a fantastic question that like I don't know the answer to. Under Does anything go under the, the temple or, or the, uh, the Imperial palace or, or something like that? I hope not. <laughs> yeah, it's rumbling while you're trying probably to. Probably some places. <laughs> yeah, right. And send sticks. Are going to... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Let's not do that. New York, they do it in a second. Yeah, probably. Run it under there. Go yeah, for it. Go ahead. Um, every line on the Tokyo subway has a name and a color associated with it, and every station has a letter and number as well. Uh, so ticket purchasing train tickets in Japan is fairly easy process. In each train station, there is a large map by the ticket machines that shows all the train lines and stops. And ticket prices are determined by how far away your current location is for, from your destination. And they are listed for each stop on the map. So, um, and all of the destination names I should mention also are written in Romaji. So if you don't know how to read... Japanese at all, that's not a problem. And so once you find your, your destination and the price, you go to a ticket machine uh, and most of them are touchscreen and you can actually choose your language and English is one of the options. And uh, then you will select your ticket price for your destination and uh, it'll you'll put in cash because this is Japan. Uh, which is, you know, yeah. as we've talked about, very cash-based uh, country. And, uh, you know, one of you, you use a lot of coins when you're, you're buying uh, train tickets. At least I did when I was there, especially 100 and 500 yen coins. Um, and once paid, the machine will print out your ticket. However, today, around 90% of commuters use an IC card. IC cards which stands for integrated circuit, are, are, are reloadable cards that can be utilized to easily pay fares on trains and buses. And you can also use them similarly to a debit card and pay for things at a lot of vending machines, uh, stores, and restaurants. It doesn't work at every single uh, place you go in Japan, but it, it works a lot of places. To pay, you place the, the card over the, the card reader as you're entering the gate. Um, and since 2001, many train and bus companies around Japan have issued IC cards. That's just so much better, isn't it? Yes. The, 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 the tyranny of exact change is over. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, no, not exactly. Well, I suppose it's not However exactly. However much change you want. I mean, so you can purchase them... You can purchase IC cards in the train station or you can purchase them online. Good. Uh, if you purchase it at the train station, I think you do need to have cash. 
Well, so, look, you've already so said that. they all have cash anyway. Right. But like sometimes getting on these things is like the DC Metro. Forget DC about is it. terrible. Forget and they. It, it's been over Sorry. ten years since I went to DC, so maybe yeah. they've updated it and changed it. But I almost it's missed, very confusing. I almost missed a wedding, like trying to get on the train because there's like it's that thing where there's like forty seven buttons for like different locations yeah. and denominations, and I'm like, so okay, so I'm going here and there, and I don't, and I'm trying to get the exact amount, and it's like, just look, I'll get on, mm-hmm. go a certain amount, and then what? What about like near field? You know, like I get on. You can charge me by the minute or something like that, <laughs> or just like, or I've, I, you scan me when I come in, scan me when I go out. You know how far I went. Right, right. There are cards uh, in the ticketing uh, ticket area where you can get the IC card, um, and um, it's pretty simple as well. Uh, you basically. Um, you just put the money in and uh, there is, I should mention, there is a uh, deposit for cards and um, for most cards, it's around 500 yen. But if you return the card when you decide you're done or you move, because there are different IC cards for different areas in Japan. So if you're going to be, God. Uh, I, I know, if you're going to be in Tokyo for a while, uh, then there's the Suica or Pasmo um, are the two options there. Um but uh, if you leave, like say you're going, uh, you're leaving Japan or you're leaving Tokyo, you would just return the card and you would get your deposit back. Um, so yeah, the, the machine will print the card right out for you. Um, and if you are staying there for a while, you can actually get a, you can make it a commuter pass and add your name to the card. And um uh, it'll be associated with your phone number as well. Hmm. But uh, for for paper tickets, you when you go to uh, the the ticket gate, you have to put insert the ticket into the insert ticket slot, walk through the gate, and pick up your paper ticket. And you need to hold on to that ticket because you're going to need it to exit the gate at your destination. <laughs> Unless you're trapped on the train forever. Yeah. The like, I don't know that you didn't just like the Tokyo jump on Obama. here, that you didn't, that you actually paid for your ticket. So that's another plus for, for the IC card. You don't have to worry about that. You just touch it on the thing. And there are even uh, some, some phones that have an IC card chip in them. Uh, so you, you just need to use your phone and I guess something Sailor Moon related as far as this goes, uh, in Taipei, Taiwan, you, that was just, was just announced, um, within the last couple of weeks, they are issuing a Moonstick IC card. Ooh. So it's a Sailor Moon Moonstick, like replica, um, size, like about eight inches tall. You can use that as your IC card as you go use the trains. People will do it. Uh, people, I would totally do it. Are you kidding me? Uh, but then I also wanted to mention the song that uh, Yuichiro, like, is, that plays as he's walking to the train station. <laughs> and uh, it is, in the background, it, it is called Azusa Nigo or Azusa Number no. 2. And this song was originally released in 1977 by the by the group Karudo, uh, which means hunter in Japanese. The song is about someone leaving their lover in the city with someone else, and they are departing on a train, the Azusa Number 2. Yeah. Uh, And according to the Japanese Wikipedia, the version of the song in this episode was sung by Bin Bin Shimada, Yuichiro's voice actor, and I think it sounds like him. I think that's correct. Um, I don't know how you tell, but... (laughs) I, I'm assuming they didn't use the uh, the original track. They I don't for think that. so. I don't think. But so. I do think it's interesting. It's it's has enough catch, uh, cultural cachet that they know that their audience, the Japanese audience, will immediately know yes. what they're doing. And it it's kind of a joke, but it like it fits this situation. People it are going to totally know does. he's going. It's like with the thing with Midnight Train to Georgia. If a character is is a little on the nose, but if a character is like you know, jilted by a lover or is going to, to meet a lover, you know, and is goes to the train right. and they play Midnight Train to Georgia, you know what's going on. Exactly. That It's the exact same sort of thing. And my favorite part of the stanza, in, it translated, it says, uh, goodbye forever. I can't say so much. For me, you are still, it's a dazzling youth. At eight o'clock, <laughs> Azusa number two, I will leave from you. Oh boy, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a dazzling youth. <laughs> Dazzling youth. 
<laughs> just reminds me of Yuichiro, but um, yeah, so Azusa Nigo was an express train, and it became well-known because of this song, and this was uh, Karudo's uh, debut single, and it was a huge hit, and um, even won some awards, and um, the Azusa is actually a limited express train line um, operated by the by JR East, which mainly runs between uh, Shinjuku and uh, Matsumoto via, via the Cho main line and uh, Shinononi line. Uh, the name Azusa is taken from the Azusa River in uh, Matsumoto uh, in Nagano Prefecture. And Matsumoto is north and kind of west of Shinjuku, and it's close to Nagano. Huh. Um, at the time, the song, I think this is kind of interesting. At the time the song debuted, I guess you can read into it this what you will, uh, there was an Azusa number two train, and uh, the at the time, the odd number trains ran eastbound or up and the even trains ran westbound or down uh so this particular train ran down so i think it's kind of interesting that he's upset and he's going down <laughs> anyways um <laughs> maybe i'm reading into that too much however a little over a year later the timetable was revised and the odd and even numbers changed so uh the azusa the train that is now called the azusa number two runs eastbound or up so there you go so okay so here's our situation yeah in the sailor moon episode yeah you've got a guy who because a woman has rejected him he's gonna walk the earth and seek his fortune. And so he's he's he feels this, his heart is singing a song of regret at their parting. Yes. Whereas in Azusa number two, the guy is singing about leaving a lover to, he's slipping out the back jack, he's got a new plan stand, he's meeting a new lover. He's saying, tomorrow I'll go on a journey with someone you don't know, I was supposed to go with you someday, to Shinonochi. Which is still shallow in spring. Okay. So it is a song of regret, but it's like I got somebody else now, so I'm I gotta I'm going. I'm I'm moving on with I'll never you. forget you. Right. I'll never forget you. It's like that. <laughs> and then Midnight Train to Georgia is about somebody who is going to be with somebody, possibly in uncertain circumstances, but she'd rather live in his world than be without him in mine. <laughs> yes. So um trains. Emotionally complicated. <laughs> yeah, they definitely are. <laughs> Itadaki Mas with Usagi. What did Usagi eat in this episode? Uh, Yuichiro tries to entice Rei out of her trance with some of her favorite food. Uh, instant curry. I want to. I want to amend poor food. Yeah. The poor food thing that I said before. Oh. It is. I mean, it's kind of it's cheap food. Yes. I still um, like. The idea that I don't like the idea, but I still think that, you know, much like what can we infer about her orientation from how she interacts with people? Yeah. Her food habits are terrible. Yeah. And I think it, I put that on like being poor and not having a lot of money, but it could also be, we learned in this episode, grandpa pretty much lets Ray do Ray. And yeah. doesn't seem to do a lot of uh, parenting of Ray. Probably and doesn't so, cook. As a teenage girl who herself doesn't have a lot of time because if she's not. Uh, running up and down the floorboards, <laughs> you know, cleaning, yeah. using a rag to clean the, the floor. Uh, she's divining all night, trying to find the secrets to the universe and what they're trying to fight. And so, yeah, uh, 3 a.m., yeah, we'll throw that it's curry in. I know. Takes care of that. I So I would say also I want to mention that all of these foods that he mentions – are kombini foods. So they're all foods that you right. can get at a, at a kombini. So it's it's quick, it's inexpensive, and it's convenient. You know, there's lots of, um, you know, the, the spaghetti with meat sauce. There's a lot of ready-made pasta at kombini. You just that, throw it in the microwave. Of all these things, that sounds like the safest thing. <laughs> well, maybe like just a fresh banana, I suppose, is fine I mean, too. the curry's good. But like, right, but like, it's, it's three minutes, it's curry, in quotes, and it says okay on the packaging so you know oh it's okay but you don't know what's in that curry <laughs> Glad they told me spaghetti and meat sauce you heat that up we've all got that in our fridge yeah that's uh, true. omelet lunch with tuna sandwich let's let's slow down here let's yeah. talk about this so the omelet lunch is just what we think of as like the omelet rice that's what i 
think. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about with amu rice or ke- amu raisu. Ketchup on it or whatever their yep. red sauce is. Yep, that's and ketchup. Then, oh, just uh, throw a tuna sandwich on top of that. Well, I think so. He says it together, like, but then you see the tuna sandwich. They're it's after. packaged differently. Yeah. But what what chases uh, an omelet with rice? A tuna, tuna sandwich. sandwich. That's gross. I've noticed a trend where I don't, and everybody does everything their own way. And why do we have um, sausage with peppers? I don't know. They're delicious, <laughs> but some of their food combinations strange. Mm. They might say the same thing about us. Sure they might. Yeah. But like, I'm thinking I've got a delicious, juicy hamburger. Mm -hmm. I want some starch. That isn't the potato starch in the bun that I'm eating. Right. (laughs) Also fry some potatoes for me, please. Yes. Uh, And then I'll take some onion rings uh, to go with that. Yeah. Uh, But like, yeah, what about coconut gel and bananas? (laughs) What are you talking about? (laughs) Well, yeah. So so the nata de coco is actually uh, something that comes originally from the Philippines. And it's a translucent jelly-like food produced by the fermentation of coconut water, um, which gels through the production of of microbial cellulose by, and I can't say the scientific name, uh, Comagata bacteria xylinus. I don't even know. I'm just going to stumble right over that. Sounds good. But uh, so, yeah, if you're okay with uh, bacteria fermenting your food into something still yummy, then... A um, A lot of foods like that. Yeah, absolutely. Then yogurt. Um, Then... Yeah, nata de coco, if you're okay with coconut, too, I should say. Right, and the f- perfect and the and the mushy taste of bananas goes perfect with that, you know? I don't know. I, I'm i just thinking you could probably get bananas at a kombini. I think he's pulling... I've uh, this is, Maybe this is his kombini oh, stock. Oh, you got... That's it. Yeah. This is the last thing. He has gone through all the things in the kombini because uh, he started with a cup of noodle. Yeah. And you know that noodle has a string that you pull on the bottom and it heats itself up. Mm-hmm. So he's done all that and now he's at the register and the last thing is there's a there's a wicker basket with bananas, bananas. right next to the take a penny, leave a penny. All right. And so that's this is the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He didn't that's get, what I think. Slushy would have been the next one. Or it's like a kombini, quote unquote, hack, you know, where it's like, well, <laughs> oh, yeah. I can get ever, these. Uh, take uh, a bite of banana and take a bite of nata de coco. Oh, boy. <laughs> transported <laughs> i can make a whole meal out of stuff i find at the kombini and i've seen a lot of videos like that anyways so um villain gage we rate a baddie one to five dark stars five being the most wicked the daemon in this episode is named toden um toden uh her name is derived from the tokyo toden tram network uh this is a series of train lines um that is run by the tokyo metropolitan bureau of transportation uh, Tokyo Toden previously had 41 routes uh, with 213 kilometers of track. Today, only the Tokyo Arakawa line, more popularly known as Tokyo Sakura Tram, remains in service. So just one line. <laughs> so if we if we did the, the Harry Potter epilogue version or Sailor Moon 2, uh-huh. uh, we'd meet Toden and she'd be like, been, been pretty rough. Well, things aren't quite the same as they used to be. Actually, this happened back in the sun sideways. <laughs> this happened a while ago, but yeah, okay, things have been rough for Toten. Yeah, um, her she's... little epaulets are. Oh, she's got epaulets. Her epaulets are wilted. Oh, you're right. She does. I kind of thought of them as like little shoulder pads, but maybe we'll call them epaulets instead. Um, <laughs> Good enough for me. I so the the name for train in in Japanese is densha. Uh, so the the formal legal name uh, for these trams is uh, Tokyo Todensha. Uh, its nickname uh, Toden uh, distinguished it from Kokuden, the Japanese National Ra- Railways electrified lines. Uh, the Sakura tram runs between Minowabashi Station to Waseda Station, which is near Waseda University's Arakara campus in Shinjuku. Uh, this Toden Lang dates back to 1913. The rest of Tokyo's streetcars were closed in the late 1960s due to a large drop in passengers. Um, and it was really popular up until that point. This type of streetcar is known across Japan as Chin Chin Densha, which literally means tingling trains. Chin Chin! <laughs> 
<laughs> rice roti. <laughs> yeah. And, and this is because of like how their bells sound. I yeah. just, I love that. Um, according to Tuxedo Amassed, it was uh, detailed in uh, Animeju Volume 195. This is a Japanese anime magazine. Uh, that the Black Star tattoo was originally planned to be on Toden's hip and or butt area, but was decided that that was too erotic and it had to be altered. Depends on who you're talking to, but uh, yeah, that's what she's going to lift her skirt up and it's on her butt. Yeah. Yeah, don't go with that one. Yeah, I mean, they already had one where it was like where her nipple would be, but... Yeah, <laughs> yeah but keep It's that. like, okay. That's fine. Yeah. But not so much. No. Uh, so her character design, uh, she has light yellow skin, yellow snake-like looking eyes, and short, bright pink hair. And she is dressed like a Japanese train conductor or station staff. Uh, she has a white short sleeve button-up shirt. <sighs> okay. So I, right. Uh, all right. I want... Hold on. Yes. I want to talk about this. Yeah. Because I don't think she has a shirt on. She has a collar and tie. I was wondering about that because I was but trying to look at it. Is, is in her cleavage. So she has no oh, shirt. Oh, okay. She's like a Chippendales. I understand. But we train. have to have a collar because we want her to have a necktie. Yeah. Because otherwise, it, what you're insane, you're wearing a necktie right. without a collar. Okay. So, yeah, so she so has, she has a no, collar. Yeah, she a white is a collar. Train themed stripper gram. <laughs> yeah, she is. right. I mean, <laughs> right. It, it's it's inspired by the look of what a conductor or station staff would wear, but they wouldn't actually wear. This. <laughs> well, not a, yeah, on my train they would. <laughs> Um, and, uh, she, her, um, her dress is navy blue and it's like a double breasted with gold buttons. Brass she's, probably, but yeah. What was that? Brass probably, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Brass buttons. And she's also wearing a navy conductor hat with a black brim and a brass button, uh, to match. And there's white, I don't know what to call them. They're like antenna type things, like attach... To make maybe attach her to the cables or yeah, I don't know I, what those I are. I was trying to figure it out. Yeah, I think they're like it doesn't make any sense because later on she is somehow connected to the overhead wires. But, yeah, but yeah, it's but through a thing would, in our back yeah. that shows up. But yeah, I guess that that that's what they would be. Yeah, she's basically she's she's a humanoid toten. That like that that's what she is. Um, and she's got but also a conductor at the same time. Yes, exactly. Uh, and she's got. White gloves and uh, brown high heels, and on both her gloves and her high heels, um, she has, from what I can tell from looking at diagrams, uh, wheels of displacement that help. They're basically little metal wheels that help connect the car to the track. Yeah, they're the trucks. Yeah, and um, and then her her um, giant metal epaulets. We're going with um, they kind of they're like the 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 metal part that goes over the, the tracks. Um, and she also has a whistle that is just completely permanently in her mouth. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, on her back, she has two yellow and black arms, of uh, that, that are for like a boom gate or a boom barrier that go down. So, um, you know, you can't cross the track while a train is about to come. Right. Um, and then on, uh, one of her hips, she has a giant, uh, bell. As well, which is one of those like little flat bells with a little arm that like uh, <laughs> rings. And then, of course, on the opposite uh, side of her body, she's got her uh, star tattoo in her armpit because why not? So now we're up to our rating. Uh, I really like how creative they got with her overall design and how they incorporated parts of the streetcar train into her her look and her character. Um, I love that there are things that she says that would be messages from a streetcar or train conductor or automated messages but they sound kind of more threatening coming from her because <laughs> yes. i mean she is attacking them um i love that she uses the assist strap and the actual tracks as weapons and that she actually turns into a humanoid streetcar and i also just think that she is sassy and funny so I'm going to give her five out of five dark stars. It's got to be five out of five, doesn't it? it? It really does. We've talked before about how you have an idea and then you go all the way into that idea, that concept. Yeah. Do you lean too heavily on a concept? Is it okay to have a yoma that's like vaguely uh, cat themed, but then also has other stuff like is right. a T-1000? Or do you just a have a cat woman with 
with furry boobs chasing you. You know, one of these is good and one of these is not. And this is, they went all the way to the hilt. And you mentioned uh, specifically that they got really creative. They said, look, this is something that we do every day. It's the Doctor Who rule of of uh, monster creation, right? Yeah. Why is a statue scary? Because when you know, when I turn my back on it, is it going to come after me? Right. You know, making things that kids see every day scary to them, like that's that. You know, the, the next time they get on a train, they'll be like, "Oh, I wonder if this is a." You know what I mean? But when I touch it, it doesn't turn into a monster. Yeah, and then take me to hell. <laughs> yeah, right. Like making the mundane scary, but then also giving her like a ton of things that she can do. Um, also making her very powerful, able to, you know, throw all the senshi for a loop. Yeah. Um, you just, you feel the effort it's drenched in sweat, but like, but like a gymnast, <laughs> in a good way. but at like a gymnast who just completed a floor routine and is getting, do they do tens anymore? Sixes. It's all sixes. Sixes across the they, board. Do they do tens? I don't well, know. Whatever the highest Standing is. ovations from the yeah. audience and high marks Not the sweaty judges. like, you know, uh, a guy in a Glengarry Glen Ross, but like, you know, sweaty <laughs> like they have just completed something amazing. Accomplished. And her, her look is good. I would ship this one with, with anybody. Uh, her Fantastic. look is good. Yeah. Uh, Plus, she, I, I like the fact, and there's been a couple, because these are all like devices, and so we've seen this before, but I like the fact that she can has a transformation yeah, that we see like her transform. Sort of like a, um, what do you call it? A, a transitional form uh, in between train and train lady. <laughs> Yes. I, I don't. Only only a fan of, uh, of the Transformers could. Uh, <laughs> she's a triple changer. She is. Uh, and I think that's really great. And so, yeah, I just gave the whistle. It's the whole thing. It's just, it's great. Yeah, um, it's five stars. Yeah, it has to be. It's got to be. Farewell, my lovely, where we rate the Damon's uh, way that the way that they go out. Um, she is frozen because of her emergency stop and she is burned and singed. She knows that she should be scared. She screams before the heart hits her. Her whistle floating midair in front of her mouth. The heart hits her and with her last bit of exhausted strength, she says, lovely. It's got to be five. It's got to be. You know, the reason I do this is to find the extreme, the greatest, Mm. the peak of human achievement. (laughs) And we may have reached that with the lovely of this, of this demon. (laughs) All the things you've already said. The fact that if a character had a whistle in their mouth and they yelled at another character, that whistle might for... 12 frames be floating in midair sure. before they bite back down on it. But as she is staring death in the face, <laughs> this loving death, it's just literally hovering oh, in no. her open mouth for some reason. And she lets out a blood curdling scream mm-hmm. until that thing hits her again. I feel like it gets longer every time. And then once it does hit her, there's a subdued, possibly sexy kind of lovely I saw this, um, it was a TikTok or something like that, but like there, a girl uh, who was, um, spoke Japanese was talking about how like, it's embarrassing to speak, try and speak Japanese in America around her friends because all of her friends think they speak Japanese because they know oh, no. 12 words or phrases that they've heard from anime, but okay. they're all like, like sexy phrases. Mm. So it's all like, Ooh. Umbrella. You know, she was like, she was doing it in Japanese, but she was saying all these things that were like, and that's kind of what it reminded me of. Like, yes, it feels like, you know, she's spent, but also there's a little like, lovely, lovely. It's kind of felt like that. So there's no six. It's got to be a five. It's got to be a five. Uh, and now we're at our wrap up and our rating. So... Usagi's ridiculous ridiculousness was really great uh, in this episode. Her conversation with Yuichiro and at the study session, I really enjoyed both of those. Um, the study session, I, I think, was a highlight. I love uh, Mako talking to Ray and noticing that something was bothering her and often to offering to lighten her her load. Um, I do really like the use of Azusa number two, um, and. Even though I feel like this is this is technically a Ray episode, I feel like we spend more time with Yuichiro than Ray. Um, 
I love uh, the diamond in this episode. Uh, fantastic. Toda and you are, are awesome. But I, I don't like how inconsiderate Yuichiro is of Ray's feelings. Uh, but I did think that overall this was a pretty funny episode. So I'm going to give it four out of five roses. There is... There's there's a there's a thing in um, let's say in uh, academia, okay, in Scholastica, yeah, uh, where you can do a really great job, and then get marked down because this is was not the assignment. So if the assignment is to write, uh, you know, five paragraphs about uh, Steinbeck's uh, The Red Pony or something like that. And you and uh, I don't know, and the uh, use of death imagery and you do it and you write an interesting paper about uh, the red pony, but you don't focus enough on the on the death imagery. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I see where you're the saying. The teacher's like, great writing. You didn't do the assignment. So I'll give you B. Right. That's why this is four stars. <laughs> I like all the elements in this. It's got, you know, this yum is going in top 10. Yeah, clearly. Uh, we'll check for higher later, but uh, definitely top 10 right now. Um, the song is fantastic. I love that sequence. Yeah, I love uh, learning more about Ray and her complexity. Um, I didn't even mind necessarily. It It's basically a Ray solo episode that Usagi is kind of wedged into because her name's on the show. Yeah. Um, but I didn't think that that was um, ill used. The only thing is, I don't. I'm do, I'm ta- I'm over I'm over this I'm over the U- Uchiro Ray. Why are we thing. pushing these two characters Why are we still together? Doing this? Yeah, he's literally. I mean, there'll be other Ray episodes presumably in this season, but yeah. it's literally just. Well, we're gonna pull this up because clearly they have a connection, and it's like, well, they do, but couldn't we have this evolve into f- respect and friendship? And you know, how where do we leave this? And we don't leave it anywhere. We leave no. it with one more. Oh, you someday you're gonna get some, but it's not today. <laughs> It's weird. We gotta we gotta stop doing that. I, and I so for so. that reason, I didn't. This is not the assignment that I asked for. What you've delivered me is evenly spaced. You've got your main idea at the beginning, and you've got three support paragraphs, and you wrap it up well at the end. Mm-hmm. It's even on nice paper, right? But B, yeah, you're gonna have four stars because <laughs> this isn't the assignment that I was looking for. No, my English title is. Assuming Yuichiro, dramatic conclusions. Assuming Yuichiro? <laughs> assuming? Like, he's assuming. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah, I guess I didn't right. say that well. Presumptuous y- Yuichiro? Yeah, right. Assuming Yuichiro. It's like starting a <laughs> sentence, comma. If one assumes a Yuichiro, then uh, from there one can uh, obviously extrapolate the idea of a ray. Well, in my defense, it is English, so I can... <laughs> if you... Yeah, that's true. No, you're right about that. Yeah. If Chad, then Becky. <laughs> right. right. If you look at this season, you have a bunch of characters, especially our two new characters, who yeah. have a problem. They are looking at trying to, you, from a utilitarian perspective, do the most good for the most people. They are definitely willing to lose some people to save a greater amount of people. Yeah. They are willing to let that car run over those people. Mm-hmm. And that's why the title of this episode is The Trolley Problem. Or or The Problem Trolley. So I want it to be the problem trolley, but I had to explain the, the, the idea the, of the trolley, the trolley problem. problem. So then I could say, because if I said the problem trolley, you're like, what? It's like a <laughs> the little the, the brave little toaster, right? Right. The uh, who's the locomotive? Thomas the uh, Thomas, Thomas the, tank the tank engine. engine. Yeah. The okay. problem trolley. <laughs> so he's out behind the. <laughs> out oh, behind she is the, smoking that cigarette in no. the train yards. <laughs> yeah, smoking the cigarette. Little uh, little too much mascara. Right. Around right. those headlights. Where are we going with this? <laughs> a lots of, lots of, I don't know. I was thinking lots of cleavage, but like, you know, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, I think, I think the Yoma is the problem, Charlie. <laughs> I think you're probably right. So next episode, we are talking about episode number 100. Sena Senchi wo Yametai, Minako no Nayami in Japanese. I want to quit being a sailor guardian. Minako's dilemma, the English translation, and the English title individual happiness hmm <laughs> another terrible title but okay. yeah yeah interesting what is individual happiness <laughs> monaco has normal problems right 
I, you feel like her to, problems define are define normal problems. Well, Ami has the same problem, which is uh, you know, for a young girl's life is a big problem. Do I move away from all my friends and pursue this? Mm-mm. But like Monaco's problems are always seem more existential, or are they not? I guess she was being a nurse and she was running around doing that. That was fun. Yeah, that was a fun one. I just feel like she's a sort of dramatic. She's very character. dramatic. Yeah. Well, I, I like it. Yeah, I but, like it too. Uh, I love Minako, but you know. yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, that's a theory I have. If you want to share some of your theories with us, you can find us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at either noob underscore sailor or sailor noob. Uh, just search and I'm sure you'll find us. We also have a link in our show notes to our Discord channel. Mm-hmm. Um, well, actually, this channel's on the Discord. How does it work? It's just a Discord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get so you right. Come it to is the a Discord. Discord. And then you get to the channels. Yes. And we have channels about Sailor Moon. We have channels about all of the podcasts and shows on the Just Enough Trump Network and the yeah. subjects that they uh, that they uh, talk about and explore. And we can add channels at any time. So it doesn't matter. So we're always having uh, fun and in- interesting discussions uh, with listeners on the Discord. So join us there. It's a good time. It is a good time. Woo woo. Add <laughs> a-, a candy all of a sudden? <laughs> It reminded me uh, of um, what what is the, the the cat girl sound again? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's woo woo. Woo woo. See, when you said woo woo woo, I, I, I yes, out of candy, but it reminded me of woo woo woo. So <laughs> I'll board the cat train, woo woo. <laughs> oh no! Right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it's a perfect day. <laughs> what what to other ride on the cat train? No, no. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. There's a a Japanese uh, train station that has a a cat. Is it a cat conductor? Um, yes. Th- yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, wait, There's a cat what? that lives now? in the station. Now you bring out cat conductor? You reminded me. We were talking about trains. Now you do? We were talking specifically about Tokyo. I don't think it's in Tokyo. So, uh, uh, yeah. Anyways. What, are ever, what are we ever coming back to trains? <clears throat> I, right. I don't know. I, I didn't Speaking really. Of, not the assignment I asked for. <laughs> Four stars. Wow. And as wasn't at one point he was like, uh, it's now a hereditary position. Yeah, because uh, I don't think. But, this... but one cat didn't have children, so they had to bring another one in, and people were like, "Oh, this is this is beyond the pale." <laughs> they had to like elect him in. I think they got over it. Though, yeah, but they because, got over uh, it. Though. They they love their their cat uh, conductor. Yeah. He's administrated well. Yes. To this day. Right. Ooh woo. Ooh woo. <laughs> well, that's our show for this week, and the name of the moon will be punishing you next week with another episode of Sailor News. Ooh woo.